Okay, we are live. Okay. Thank you, Monali. Uh, good morning, one and all. I think it must be good evening for Dr. Yanki Mori at the Australia. So, yeah, I, on behalf of the Tiblani, uh, I welcome all of you. This is the last talk of the, you know, special talk series, which is organized by Tiblani. And today we have among us, our invited speaker is Dr. Yanki Mori from uh, University of Sydney, Australia. So uh, it's time uh, for the talk. So uh, now I would like to request Dr. Kem Sunung Sang uh, to kindly introduce our speaker and to start this session. Over to you, Dr. Kem Sung. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bijan. And uh, very good morning to everyone who will join for the last uh, talk for this year. So, uh, yeah, good to see our speaker, uh, Yankee Moody, after a long time. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just uh, one or two lines. Uh, I think many of our uh, viewers are familiar with uh, Yankee Moody. She's uh, right now an associate professor at the uh, University of Sydney. And uh, of course, uh, we also know her husband who has given a talk last last uh, week, right? Mark Post. So, uh, yeah, she she uh, she's from she's working in Sydney. She's from uh, Arunachal, and uh, she has worked on these languages of uh, uh, Arunachal Pradesh. She's had uh, she's done her PhD from University of Bern. Uh, on the uh, Milang uh, language. So uh, yeah, if you are interested in a CV, I think you can, she's listed in Academia. You can go take a look. Uh, her publications are all up there. I don't want to uh, take much time so that we can get into the uh, uh, talk. And uh, yeah, I think uh, today we have a little less participants, but since this is being recorded, it'll be up on the uh, on YouTube. So that's an advantage of having these online talks. So yeah, today uh, the name of the paper is Human Proper Names and the Reconstruction of Zomian Prehistory. So yeah, now I'll hand over the time to uh, Yanki. Let's take your time. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Temsu. I couldn't even recognize you because of the, <laughs> I don't know, this, this complete new look. Um, it's, it's been uh, quite some time since the COVID. Um, I haven't seen you in that <laughs> different look, so I didn't, uh, I didn't know that it was you. But uh, thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, thank you, Tivlenai. Is that how you pronounce Tivlenai? For uh, inviting me, having me, um, and giving me this opportunity. Okay, so for my story today. Uh, is about human proper names and reconstruction of the Jomian prehistory. Okay, so um, just a second. Uh, let me just fiddle with the screen for a bit. Um, okay, so um, okay, so uh, before we go to the uh, main uh, part of the uh, talk, let's just uh, look at a little bit about. Um, the background, the, the, the background story to the talk, okay? So what we're looking at here we, is within the discussion of hills and plains people. So um, we know that um, the mainland South Asia, um, the one that uh, we can, we can I, I don't know if you can see my cursor here. So there's, there's always hills people and plains people and um, they, they've often been, or, or they are culturally and linguistically different. And I, I don't have to quote um, um, any, anybody on, on this statement, uh, at least for this audience. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, um, it's, it's the, the, I mean, the relation between the hills people and the plains people are not isolated. Okay, there, there has been histories uh, of constant interactions between hills people and uh, the 
is the second, um, the hills people and, and the uh, plains people. Okay, so that's uh, one part of our background. Um, and um, I will not go into the detail of what, you know, the, the, about Jomia, the discussion about Jomia is, but um, just as a part of this background, so Jomia was a, a geo geographical term that was um, coined by uh, Ben Sandel in 2002. To, to talk about this uh, landmass, this huge landmass that comprises half of South, Southwest uh, China, Northeast India, part of Burma, especially the hill trek, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, upland, uh, highland areas of Thailand. Okay, so it's a landmass, it's a, ge it's a ge geographical term, okay? And um, the people living there. But um, what happened was in 2009, James Scott, um, I don't know whether he, he's, uh, he's rightly to be called as a cult cultural anthropologist, political scientist, he took that term further and he further argues that the people they residing on, in the hills have come from the plains, are, are originally from the plains. And, um, and in fact, he made a statement that they are run, run away from state expansions from the plain. So if you are from the hills, so that means that we have run away from, from all these state expansions, okay? So that's the background of Jomia. If that's the argument, can we find any linguistic evidence, evidence of movement from plains to the hills, okay? So what I'm going to do to try to find evidence, I'm going, to, to find evidence in the sense of looking for you know, the movement from plains to the hills, I'm going to look at the naming system of some tibeto burman language group, okay? Okay, so this will be my area that I will be focused on, the, um, my study area, which will be uh, Northeast India. And uh, even within Northeast India, I'll be fo focusing on my, um, the, the area that, you know, the area where I work the most, and um, I've chosen some random villages um, for, um, because I, I want to look at the naming, um, naming system, if, there, if I can see any naming pattern. So uh, my, my villages are Ngaming, Ngaming. I'm just adding, okay. So Ngaming is a border village right between um, at the border, Ornachal border and Tibet border and Balak, um, I should have put it a little bit up here. Um, so Balak is a, another village um, that I'll be looking at and the data from their village and uh, Mer, um, another Tani village. And so these are Tani uh, speaking areas. So this will be my main, um, the area that I'll be focused on. And later on, um, I'll also look at some data from Gosai Gaon. So Gosai Gao is not the name of the village. Uh, Raimona is the name of the village. Uh, this is in Pokhajar district. And I'll be looking at some data from this area because I will try to compare the Tani system with um, some other tibeto burman speaking areas, okay? So that's Gosai Gao. And then I'll also take a look at some data from Oksam Gwangba village, uh, which is in Hobal district uh, near Impal. So um, I'll look at um, some data. We we'll look at some data from this area, and then we will cl quickly uh, zoom up to um, the Nepal-Tibet border, which is in the northeast of um, Nepal. So this is a, a place called Kirong. So we'll also look at some um, the naming system of this area. So. <clears throat> Also, as a background, um, I also want you to keep that, you know, um, generally people, um, you know, normally the popular um, ideas or popular knowledge that people have about the Eastern Himalaya is about this very heavy, big weight, uh, big, um, heavy, dominant cultural uh, areas, right? Um, you know, the, the Tibetic zone from um, from the north and the Indo Indo sphere that that is um, the Indo Aryan cultural linguistic area from the south. Okay, so but what we we are what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on these 
this trait, which is like the, the gist of a sandwich. Okay, so that's the area that I will be uh, will be looking at. Okay. Okay, so that area um, between the two uh, very bright orange and the light orange between that um, sandwich, the middle sandwich zone. I'm going to claim that it has two different naming system, okay, two different naming system, which I'm just going to call as type one, which is structurally and semantically with this, which is distinct from other system. And um, it also has a type two system, which is indic derived naming system. Okay. Okay, a little bit about the sources, um, my, where my data comes from. So um, like everybody, I'm also using my field notes, um, these um, 15 years of um, traveling back and forth around our natural villages, lots of field notes, um, names of people that I have talked to, names of people that I made uh, work with. So my field notes, and very interestingly, I also have um, names um, that I've collected from uh, almost, almost like, <laughs> I don't even want to mention, it's a PDF form of people, you know, which is a uh, water rolls from the electoral office of Ornatsu Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, okay? It's it's available if you just, you know, if, if, if you're interested um, to do um, similar work um, in, in an area that you are interested, you can have a look, it's all available there. So that's, um, that's one, um, the number two uh, primary source. And then, um, Another source is this taxpayer document from Kirong region from Tibet, which is a secondary source, uh, which was uh, released by Yofchal in uh, 2003. Okay, those are my three uh, data sources. Now, um, type one um, system. So in the type one system, which I said that it's structurally, structurally and semantically distinct, so it, by that, I mean, um, so the, the, uh, the naming system followed, the proper naming system followed the basic morphological principle of the language. So they are intricately bound even in the morphology, okay? With part of the grammar. It's not something that just, you know, just they just made up. So for example, if, if you have a word formation process like this, in, in Tani, um, this is a word formation process of uh, most of the Tani languages. So you have, if you have these operators, like you have roots, you have affixations, compounding, the same similar principle applies with when you are forming uh, proper names, human names. Okay, it's it's not a it's not a, a, a different system. So they are very intricate. So even, even the way um, it's sensitive to how the, um, you know, the morphology of the grammar is um, organized. Yeah, so if, if you look at um, the Tani grammar, um, the Tani grammar is very sensitive to, um, at, I mean, at the basic level, especially you have a root level, which you cannot uh, give, you know, you cannot include them as um, lexical class. And then um, above the root level will be your word level. So um, the same uh, principles of you know how you distinguish between these uh, levels also applies to uh, the proper name system. Okay, so um, and and you will also notice that most of the um, Tani names so um, they are disyllabic or disyllable. Um, so you have a, 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 fix, a, fix, a, a root form or a bare root, and then you combine um, with another form and you basically um, you know, make a word. So it could also be the same. Um, it's the same with general lexeme of the language, okay? So it's, it's very intricate, it's exactly the same, okay? So that's one part. And um, in type two, uh, sorry, in type one, um, again, um, the naming system also reflect a very deep um, the, the cultural relationship of um, of how uh, people will name um, the human the, the naming system works. So um, 
sometimes i mean you can once you see all this data you can you know you you will start to find some patterns like it will start to fall into some dom some semantic domains okay i just want to mention that you know so all these um, semantic domains like bird order reproduction plane continuity these are not the things that the speaker themselves are thinking you know i'm going to keep my child based on reproduction based on con they are not thinking it it's it just my in, in the way I, I, I looked at the um, data and I thought, okay, I see these sort of patterns, okay? So that's what I, I'm doing here. But um, the names, um, many of them will fall under these um, categories, okay? And we'll look at examples uh, later on, a lot of them. Okay, so starting with an example, very interesting, very distinct is uh, this type of naming system. So. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, any other um, culture around the world would feel comfortable or acceptable to start, you know, to start to give your children or have an individual name, which would mean just penis and vagina. Yeah, it might be strange in um, in many of the culture around the world, but uh, in the Tani uh, group, especially in um, the lower Adi and the upper Adi area, it is very, very common. Okay, this is, there is no irony whatsoever when you name a children a single penis, first penis, second penis, mistake vagina, helper vagina, or it's just vagina. These are person's name, and this can be in your other card. This will be how you will address yourself in the village meeting. Um, nobody will think that there is any irony in that. Okay, this, if, if you become an ICE officer, this will still be your name. So, um, I mean, I just want to point out that this is, this is a, a very unique system, okay? And another um, semantically and culturally distinct feature uh, that you can see among the Tani um, naming system um, within the highly structured system of tracing train continuity. So I, I don't know if, um, I'm sure there must be um, something like this in other groups of Northeast India as well. But um, in the Thani groups, people are very obsessed about this. Um, I, I, I really don't understand. People will you know, sit delayed meeting after clan meeting after meeting, you know, writing books after books on, on these issues, okay? Um, just for example, I just want to show you, I uh, tell you that this is, if this is a person's name, so Boken, so this Bo must be a syllable that um, that would be a H to, to the person, this person himself or herself. And then uh, what happened is the, this second syllable is taken down and then will be given to the children of Boken. So Boken will have Kenmun, Kenjom, a Kenpa, and then uh, if you are Kenmun, so from Kenmun you have Minmu, all the second syllable, um, it's, you know, it's, it's continued, okay? Um, another very interesting feature that, um, you know, which make semantically and culturally distinctive features um, uh, of this funny system is the incorporation of um, supernatural belief, um, system okay the, the the whole belief system so um, um i'm sure um you would remember um many of you must have heard uh, like from your parents or grandparents that you know, it was very hard for children to survive um, in the pre-modern time when there was no vaccination no hospitals so um the way the tani people um try to understand this um what was happening was they, they, I mean, they attribute the cause of the death of the child to some, you know, the action of some spirit, okay? So what they will do is in order to, um, to, you know, to deter the spirits from coveting, the, coveting your child, um, they will think of, or think or they will, um, you know, Try to find the most hideous or unloving or hateful names, and 
and they think it, because they, it, it, they feel that it give them a chance to survive, okay? And um, I'm sure you must have some uh, stories from um, all the, I mean, the, the, big, the background you come from, um, similar stories um, too. My favorite here is um, Kopir. So um, I don't know him personally, but um, probably uh, L. So um, Kopir is, uh, you use that as toilet paper, um, toilet paper basically, but it's a stick. And um, um, Takot was one of my main uh, language teacher for Minyong, Agi Minyong. These are real person's names, some of them, and some of them I have asked um, their um, permission to talk about them, but as long as I don't use the, their clan name, um, <laughs> it won't be a problem. So um, that's another um, semantic domain. Another semantic domain is, um, which I'm just calling as circumstances of birth, um, the naming, to have a name that denotes, um, you know, when a child is born, um, the namers hope, hopes, um, what he was thinking, what he felt about the child. So, you know, some of these names will have all those feelings um, in, in their names. Yeah. For example, like uh, Tokpet is an old uh, lady in um, somewhere in Upper Siam, and I asked her, well, you know, what, what is the meaning of your name? So, well, you know, when I was when I was born, my my mom's vagina got torn, so that's how I got my name, and that's her name. And yes. Uh, you know, many of them are, if you ask them, it's, it's very interesting how they got their name. So a person like Moman, maybe her father went hunting and, and there was nobody in the house or it was the, um, the rice cutting or harvesting or sowing or planting time. And uh, you know, everybody was busy and she came on the wrong time. So, you know, these are the names that you know that that you would see. Uh, okay, now I come to type two. So I introduce um, type one, um, the naming pattern, the naming system, the principles, and now I'm coming to type two. So type two in type two, what um, you would see is these names are directly imp imported from Indic languages, so often associated with um, religious meaning. Buddhism and Hinduism. So um, I know that there will be, uh, there, there are um, some native, uh, very specific native, na you know, native, or I, I, I don't think uh, native would be the right word to use there. There is culturally specific, village specific way of naming even among the Tibetan group in Arunachal Pradesh, but um, they are not the prototypical name. So that's what I'll say. So they are not the prototypical name. The popular prototypical name from Tibetan names like Dolma, Dolji, Rinchin, Dawa, they are all um, translated from the Indian Sanskrit um, names. And, um, and you would see they all, they are, how, how do you say, they are all these high sounding names. Right. I hope you understand what high sounding names like one who liberates others, indestructible, uh, moon who brings light. So these are all, these are not like, you know, the toilet paper stick or you know, the, the two second penis enough vagina. I mean, this, this is quite different, right? And um, again, um, so some of the, um, it's, it's not, all the Tani groups, the, especially um, the villages that I showed you are, are immune to the Indic system or the number two type system. There have been changes. And one of the um, changes that I, I saw um, from, from the data is uh, that I'll, I'll talk about um, later on is from um, the, this uh, missing uh, group. Um, especially from um, Mer village, okay? That's a, a village that is very close to the border between Ormachal and Assam. Okay, so what you see here is um, things like Aun, Aun, uh, all antique, um, Aun, light, so a bit like a bit high, high sounding names. So I don't know if in English speaker will say high sounding names, there must be another. 
words that exist, but um, please bear. And um, what you will notice even with the structure that has, um, in the beginning, I showed you the tiny um, basic word formation um, structure or system. And I said, um, the basic is disallable, disallable names. But what you started, you, you will start to see is here uh, is these are all um, trisyllabic, okay? So if there are any um, Bodo or um, other language speakers, I mean, you can tell me later after this talk um, what this, um, not, not ROT, ROT must be ROT, but this OSIRI, OBT, this E, T, uh, RE, like a diminutive um, you know, form that get attached, um, you know, it, it must mean something, I mean, some, some uh, it must come from another, another um, you know, pattern or naming patterns, okay? So uh, you can tell me if you have this system in your language. Okay, so this is a popular missing uh, names that I, I found um, from Mare Village. Okay, so uh, which, uh, where, uh, where is each type of this system found? So we, found, we, we saw that the type one system is found um, among the highland. I'm sorry, it's very hot. <laughs> if I can just open the... I'll close it because it was a bit not too noisy, but it's becoming too hot. Yeah, so uh, when I so type one system is found among the highland uh, groups, so more towards the hills, and the type two um, the type two uh, system mainly among the plain plateaus. Okay, so. What you see here in this table is the result of the data that, that I, I showed you before, is the result of all the data that I went through, okay? So it, it looks very neat now, but um, it was, it was it began as a mess. But um, what you see here um, you know, between Balak and Naming is um, um, the result here is that um, there wasn't very much um, that there was not much difference. Um, though um, Naming is um, you know, spoken in an area where um, they are the minority and it's um, the main, um, the most, the dominant language in that area is more like Hindi and um, Tibetic, uh, a Tibetic Sangla uh, language, okay? But um, you can see that um, they, both Naming and Balak are you know, performing in the same, um, and the percentage are almost exactly the same. Okay, so um, I think I skipped um, a point. Um, you know, bringing all these uh, groups together, I, I brought all these language groups, and um, these are all Tibeto Burman language group because I was interested to see if that Tani system, you know. If, if that Tani system also exists in any other Tibeto Burman groups that are associated with um, you know, state uh, power, nation powers. So that's why I specifically chose Boro and Meite. You know, I could have put any other uh, Tibeto Burman um, languages of Northeast India, right? But um, I know that they have the they had a history of um, you know, nation state um, building. So that's that's the region. So uh, Balak and uh, Naming, not many difference. I mean, not very close to Assam, but um, you can go down one day and you can return that the next day. I'll, I'll come back to this um, interesting group, um, the Mayor Village, um, Raimona Village um, and Okram. If we contrast with what we saw in Balak and Naming, yes, uh, we can see that there is a strong um, evidence of, you know, that, that Indic, um, the Indic influence. Um, so um, I don't know if I should um, talk more on this, but, um, um, 
with the data, um, in Raimona, there were in fact about um, the data that I looked at, um, especially from the border list um, from this particular village, that there were about 867, 70 um, border list. But within that, um, from, from 860 uh, water leads, about um, 560 or 70, you can you can um, you know you can just see that they are. Um, you know, I might be wrong about this, but they did not have a borough sounding name at all. So um, I might um, I, I can guess who I mean what uh, you know what language ethnic group they could be, but um, I just took that out and then I focus only the one uh, where. Um, you can see that these are borrow origin, okay? So um, very strong um, uh, Indic influence and um, the same, uh, very similar, I saw with Okram Wang, uh, Wang Mataba village. Um, here again, um, you know, if I go to specific detail of each of these um, data, um, I, don't I don't remember everything, but what I remember from data that I saw in the Maite naming system was you had a, a clan name and then you have middle name and then you have a sing or either a devi. So for me, it was clear that um, your, your clan name comes first and I took the proper human proper name as the middle name, okay? So still I found um, at least 80% of them had um, you know, some Indic, had Indic origin. And there were 20 uh, plus um, or something more, which I don't know. Okay, I, I just I just leave it like that because um you know I um I think Chelia's 2005 um uh, Sovana Chelia talks about um, a little bit about um, the naming um, the proper naming um, system in Meite, but it wasn't um, it, it was a, a, for a different discussion. Okay. So um, that's that's the story uh, of Bodo and Meite. The interesting, the most interesting from all this group was the missing, uh, the missing tribe. We, they're also known as Miri tribe. So um, again, the village I said is it's it, they're right on the border of um, the foothills, and you know that they are Tani speakers, you know, and and we know that they they have they they. They, uh, they originated from the hills, right? And we even have a history recorded about them that they, they live in that area and sp spoke that language. So if they have any Indic, um, if you see that, 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 that there is some Indic influence changes that is happening in their language, um, not only with their culture, but also with the structure, we, we are quite confident that this has been more than 200 years because um, the, the, the British historical records uh, mention about them in the 18th century, right in that village. Yeah, So we know that they, they, they have been there and we know that it will be more than 200 years. Yeah, So that was the interesting um, um, is from uh, Mayor, and uh, you have already seen how their name, um, you know, their naming patterns are. I, I won't say have changed, but is increasingly changing. Okay. So um, another um, you know, naming um, system that I looked at is this this Kitrong area. So this was this is also about two thousand um, about two thousand eight hundred. Yeah, about 2,800 uh, people's name. And this, this is a record which um, it's based on government documents, um, taxpayers' uh, government document. And um, what you will notice here is they have a if you look at the um, suggested in interpretation of how uh, your child have um, lost them, they have a system which is very similar. It stands out. So that's why I have underlined them. It stands out and it's it's quite similar. And, and I, I shouldn't use the word quite. It's similar to the Tani system. 
especially here, five is enough. Okay, I, I think I have more. Yeah, the last born. So youngest son, rebelling, fed up, annoyed. And in fact, there's, there's more. So um, based on what I, I see um, like on this base, um, I'm, I'm claiming that this is, this is not something out of a coincidence or you know, something that just happened to be there. What I'm going to claim is that this is um, this source that there is a common origin of this sort of system. Okay, which means the way the Tani naming pattern works, the, and the way this system used to exist, form a cognate system. Okay, so um, they are not they are not random. Okay, so what does this suggest? So structurally, structurally and semantically distinct system is archaic. So what I'm claiming is that the the, the because uh, we we you know I have talked enough of how it's it aligned with the 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 grammar of the language, right? The structure of the language. You know you you can't just make it up a, a new system. So if your um, you know, naming human naming system exactly with how your grammar works. It has to be archaic, archaic. Okay, and and at the same time, um, this is um the the type one system we saw are semantically highly unusual. You don't you don't often find them um, everywhere. You know, and and in fact, this cannot be independently innovated. Just just like that. Okay, I've already mentioned that. And on the other hand, what you see in the Indic derived system, um, the system is more innovative, um, associated with state forming groups um, and groups who have descended to plains and inter integrated into the state, so like the case of the missing speakers. Okay, so um, data from the naming uh, systems are more suggestive of the history of progressive population movement movements from the hills to the plain, at least among Tibeto Burman speaking groups. So um, because uh, Scott talks about the whole uh, Southeast Mastiff, it, it, it cover a lot of other ethnic groups, language groups, but at least in Tibeto Burman here, we have an evidence that it shows that the movement is not from the plains to the hills, it's the other way around, it's the hills to the plain, okay? So of course it is not when you, you know, if it is other way around, this is not compatible with what Scott is suggesting, right? The state evasion, uh, evasion hypothesis. Okay, so um, I'm going to conclude. So I don't, I, I do not find linguistic evidence from naming system that would support a series, you know, a series of movement from plains to the hills. Okay, that's my um, conclusion. And thank you, thank you for bearing all my suffering. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you for that wonderful talk. Uh, very interesting uh, topic. Oh, thanks. And perhaps I should start by asking what your name means. Okay, so my it, name is, um, it's spelled a bit weird um, because of the school that I went to, um, American Missionary School, but um, my name should be Y A N G A I, so young. It's two syllable. Young is for um, love, and key is an intensifier. Could be an adjective intensifier and in intensifier. So young intensifier. So young key is when you love someone. So and and modi mo is the root for the land, and d is the root for mountain. So um, from the mountain. So my clan are up, up in the mountain. So the whole village is there. <laughs> yeah, at least it <laughs> doesn't have that. <laughs> at least it's not Kopir. <laughs> but Kopir was my favorite name. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and so maybe he's facing some network issue. Oh, Tim Su. 
Anyway, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me take over uh, for a while. So mm -hmm. yes, uh, yeah, it's time for the discussion. And if any of the participants have any comment, discuss, uh, you know, any question or any observation, yeah, it's the time. Uh, yeah, may I come? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Yankee, for a very uh, good presentation. Uh, it's very, very informative. So this is Alindra. I'm from uh, Boro community. And uh, my name is actually, actually, uh, this is a non-native word. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, Alindra. I, I think the Sanskrit root, Alin. Alin means, yes. uh, I think, black bee. But uh, sometimes yes. what happens, uh, like uh, uh, I, uh, my my name is now Alindra. So uh -huh. uh, some people say that it is combination of Ali and Indra. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, did you collect the data from electoral roll only or you uh, collected from other sources also? Actually, I could not follow all the, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so yeah. the data that uh, I use for Bodo, yeah and um, the one from uh, Okram village, um, okay. they were only based on the voter okay. registered list. Okay, okay. So okay. yeah, yeah. I asked it because I just wanted to tell you one thing that uh, now what is happening in uh, naming, actually mm -hmm. before it was, uh, as you have already told that Indic uh, derived. Yes. So yeah, uh, you know, almost all the names were actually in the, uh, derived uh, in, in case of Boro people also. But now yeah. what is happening, they are actually giving uh, names from their native words. Even if it yes. is a verb, it is, even if it is an adjective like that. Yeah. 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 So maybe this is because, of, you know, uh, revi yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, revitalizing yeah. their yes. language. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yes. yeah. 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 So, uh, Alindra. Um, that yeah. Was, so, um, yeah. So, I I thought uh, it would also be a good idea to collect uh, names, uh, uh, you know, uh, of yes. the people under eighteen. Yeah. Like exactly. Yes, so yes, that's yes. what you noticed. So there was yeah. a very big drawback in yeah. this paper in this yeah. research because yeah. only the one who were eighteen years who can yeah. have a voter list, their name. Um, was there right yes, so yes. the the young um the young you know the the the, 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 the names that could show the most changes yes, were yes. missing yes. yeah so that was a big um part that missed in this yeah now somebody can start um yes to rewrite this same yeah. paper yeah. again yeah. and add all these names yeah yeah but anyway, and, um, you have already, you know, uh, uh, taken a big area actually. So yeah. So uh, Ali, Alindra, can yeah. can I uh, ask you, um, beg, uh, because uh, I when I was I remember when I was looking at the uh, the Boro data, I know that it yeah. was an Assamese trip. Yeah. Um, you know, my Ass Assamese or oh, is not. Okay. I I won't say very bad, but I can um, I can yeah. still um, yeah. read the Assamese script. Um, what I noticed was um, the some of the um, people will have a, the the father will have a thing. So, for example, Alindra Burma or Alindra Burma Singh, the father, but yeah. the son doesn't take on the Singh anymore. So, say for example, your father's surname had a Singh attached, but yes. you did not take. So, is that is that very common now? Or, um, uh, not exactly. Actually, uh, a, a, a Singh uh, that is not our surname. Suppose uh, sometimes in the middle name Singh, Nath, Lal, like yes, Chandra, yes, yes. Kumar, those are used, but uh, those are not. You know, those are not taken by uh, their sons or uh, daughters. Uh, oh, okay. But but uh, surname like uh, Brahma. Brahma actually yeah, yeah, yeah. came very late. Uh, okay. Yeah, in case of surname, uh, you can uh, find it very interesting that in Boro, what is happening, you can find Ari, Ari, Ari in all the surnames, like Mosahari, Narzari, Bosomodari. Yeah, Ri, Ri, Ri. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. Ari, Ari. It is okay, like, uh, you know, uh, ad adjectivalizer kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, like uh, Deimari. Dei, Dei means uh, water. Yeah, Basumotari. yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, water for. Mm. Like that, yeah. So Monali also knows about it very well, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, 
you know what what happened with uh, uh, other uh, 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 you know uh, surnames like brahma brahma actually came very late uh, mm-hmm. i think in early uh, uh, 20th century when the brahma kalisharan brahma came and uh, he actually uh, brought a movement okay uh, among the boros then actually our original uh, surname is also narzari narzari yeah okay. yeah narzari so uh, mm-hmm. it, it came like that only but usually uh, uh, boro people do not change their uh, surname yeah surnames yeah yeah, yeah. so easily... here yeah in this paper um yeah, yeah. you know surname will itself will be a, a complete different research and yes. in fact the note is yeah. um languages and you know every language groups the 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 way surnames patterns or work would be a it, it will be a very very yes. <laughs> different work and it will require a really good amount of you know could be somebody's phd thesis yes yes, yes. definitely yeah thank you okay thank you thank you yeah thank you is or uh, yeah he has already joined yeah in between i also keep claim that uh, the same thing that is happening with bro it's happening with maithi also as of now like uh, you know uh, in those 2005 maybe in jailers work it was referred by the uh, dr yanki uh, yes 80% was from the you know indic or from the western origin and some 20% it was showing that it is from indigenous origin or something but yeah, yeah. this the new generation uh there can be interchange so 80% mm-hmm. can be from the indigenous yeah. origin and that remaining some 20 to 30% will be from the western or from the indic origin and uh one example that i can cite is my name let's say laistrom bijan kumar singh as you said that the first name is our clan name or the our third name and middle name is my name and the yes. last one singh or devi is you know specially it can categorize like male or female especially within yeah, the manipur yeah. state yeah, but yeah. what people are you know uh, adopting is they, they are you know uh, letting the last part the sing or the be part simply they will be interchanging like vijay kumar laisram or laisram vijay kumar that's it oh. something like that so that's so, that's happening now yeah that is happening now see oh, uh, wow. this sing devi we thought that this is an you know or the uh, by you know willingly or unwillingly we accepted a hinduism so this is yeah, a part yeah. of hindu stuff people think in that way so those who are more inclined towards the our uh, sanamahi you know religion or our original yeah. religion they used to drop this singh or devi part and simply okay. it would be then kumar laisram or laisram bijan kumar then you know if it is a girl then they used to chanu also chanu yeah chanu yeah yeah instead yeah. of devi they used to you know prefer chanu also so, yeah this is the scenario in you know current uh, maithi society as of now so many name like you know by uh, this babi babi means for the male and female langan ba for the male langan bi mm-hmm. for the female same thing babi will be added at the uh, as a suffix then it will uh, you know give the information whether the person is a male or a female from the last mm-hmm. suffix we can identify in maithi this is very systematic also ba, yeah yeah it, it will be for the male b it will be for the female yes and there are some name also if all the siblings are only the girls then they used to put some you know male names also like omba which is common mm-hmm. for male and can be used yeah. for female also yes mm. thank you thank you that's i want to share over to you tensu yeah can i add here something yeah uh, i am taking uh, much time actually so uh, i i just uh, yeah uh, remember about the western part yeah uh, that vision has already yeah uh, mentioned uh, so uh, in among boro people also we can see uh, out of uh, around 15 lakh uh, population uh, mm-hmm. around 1.5 uh, are actually uh, they belong to uh, christianity uh, uh, yeah, but, yeah yeah so uh, you know you can uh, see uh, the western names in case of yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that is yeah. also one part and another one is uh, yeah like singh and devi we can find uh, uh, like uh, some people uh, uh, call it uh, uh, you know prefix or salutation like mr and sri or miss mm-hmm. and mrs like that those things are also there actually in uh, you know in the tribal communities like tiwa 
uh, in case of male they will say mungsa if it is female mungsa ze like that so it is in uh, thai language also and in boro we can uh, say like uh, in boro if it is male we call musri like sri musri then in case of uh, female it is thoraina like that so this is actually uh, what happens it is written in primary schools but after you know leaving the primary school it, it changes changes to sri and means like that yeah mm, okay. yeah those are yes, not so. actually yeah they can uh, yeah to yes. uh, higher higher levels yeah thank you okay so um yeah i i kn- i knew that you know if 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 it is if we are talking about indic you know influence indic you know the influence of indic groups and um naming naming patterns um christianity is uh, i mean it has also made a huge impact but the history of if we are thinking about the pre jomian the jomian history i mean the history of the hills um, if the people who were in the hills if uh, if we are trying to think and bring back to more than what scott has proposed about you know should be at least more than 2000 years right then christianity in that scale of time christianity is just yesterday yeah so it's not very i mean we 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 won't um it, it doesn't even qualify for uh, history yet so i mean that's what i will say i mean the way that would impact um on 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 the naming system on our cultural belief system i mean um you know, on on the st- the i mean the 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 most um You know, the, the salient feature of this whatever we have been talking is on the structure of the language right if it, it can um, influence the structure of the language that's it that has been a long contact so that that is what has happened with the uh, missing the miri speakers of mer the uh, maite and the boro speakers yeah so that yeah, was I... the reason that i did not bring um, any uh-huh. Okay, can I also come in? Yes. Hello, Bijen. Mm, okay. Uh, this is Musa. Yeah, yeah. I am Hokib. Yeah. Oh, Hokib. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Hokib. <laughs> oh, you sound <laughs> you sound almost like Musa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> didn't because I can't see your face. Okay. Uh, it was a very uh, interesting topic and uh, perhaps something that is very close to my mind. So I have been arguing for a while because the influence of Scott is uh, very, very, very heavy upon the social scientists. Yes. And yes. some of the uh, social scientists from the uh, from Northeast India or from India. So okay. some some articles, some books have been written. Uh, what do you call confirming the hypothesis of uh, Scott? Mm-hmm. and so uh, the argument is that uh, against states against uh, what, whatever names they have given and mm-hmm. the assumption they, they have uh, applied is that based on uh, scott hypothesis yes. the so called the so called hill people of northeast india are what you call run away from state formation so mm-hmm. this is uh, something that is prevalent among uh, i don't know among social uh, scientists uh, this from northeast india i know i can give you some references some books some articles have come up Uh, mm-hmm. confirming and uh, not confirming agreeing to his hypothesis or extending his hypothesis and i have been a very stern opponent of this one though i have not yeah, join add, or... add me on that group of opponent yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, i was the only lone opponent that i said that, uh, because i have not worked on this area but from mm-hmm. my limited knowledge of the languages from uh, the hills there is no evidence to show that uh, the hill people are uh, run away from the state and you yes. have confirmed this and then mark also has confirmed this, this by stating that uh, uh what you call uh, hill population uh, precedes state formation so now yes. things are very clear from linguistic perspective and one of the reasons that, that is often cited is for what you call myth and or mythology so yes. in the mytho- in the mythology of the kukichin the kukichin people are what you could believe to have uh, sprung up from a cave okay mm-hmm. from, from a yes. cave or yes. from a cave or uh, so from a cave so the inside of the cave they related us to the plain land okay to the mm-hmm. plain plain land and the mythology says that from the from the cave uh, the cave was encircled it was uh, closed by a boulder 
and then uh, uh, one of the elders he lifted up he 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 lifted up the um, enclave or how do you call it, the enclosure, and that's mm -hmm. how the that's how the Kukichin people came up to to the land. Uh, earlier they were settling below the be, below the art. So that below the art or below the cave, uh, the author one of the authors uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, what uh, gave it as a justification to say that. Uh, the mythology of the Kukichin says that they live under the cave and that cave he related to the plain and they're the coming out into the earth he related to uh, what do you call this hill so going to the hill mm -hmm. so I said okay these are mythology mythology uh, cannot be taken as an evidence so rather we should have more archaeological or linguistic evidence so yeah, yes. there, there are so many stories of this so how can we uh, justifies uh, those mythological claims because mythological claims cannot be, uh, what do you call, justified. It's not scientific. And uh, yeah, it's not scientific at all. So uh, your naming system, uh, which also works uh, uh, the same for most of the um, uh, Kukichin languages. So we named, uh, parent gave us the name uh, by calling them something like baby. Huh? They give us something yeah. like baby or something like something that doesn't fade or uh, for, uh, what do you call uh, something that is very dear to the heart. So these are how parents gave us the name. And mm -hmm. then, for example, my name is Pao Thang. So Pao uh, Thang comes from, I, I took the name, derived my name from my grandfather, who is uh, Han Pao. So the last syllable of Han Pao, my grandfather was Han Pao. So mm -hmm. I have to take the last syllable of my grandfather's name, Han Pao, yeah. and become yeah. Pao Thang. Pao yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, from Han Pao, Pao Thang. This is how we derive. So this yeah. is the naming pattern. In addition to that, people call us by nickname. They gave us something like rose flower uh, or something that is uh, in their, mm. endearing to their hearts. So this is one area where uh, you are very right that uh, our naming system doesn't confine to uh, what you call this uh, plain uh, kind of name or from Indic names. Yeah. And also, if you look at not only naming pattern, so if you look at... Uh, a uh, whole uh, morphology of the language. So it also doesn't confirm huh? like uh, something that's the sort of reduplication or some kind of Cisco syllabic kind of word structures yes. that we have that hardly confirm to the plain kind of structure. And also the argument is that uh, because of the, uh, what do you call it, uh, development of agriculture in yellow basin, which yes. could, uh, uh, and yes. the, in the invention of rice, paddy, so yeah. that uh, that supported uh, what you call uh, uh, lots of population in the plain. So earlier people were residing in the mountains and the valley. After the discovery of grain and then the, well, after the, the, the grain discovery, it supported lots of population in the plain. And that's how people uh, rather come into the plain. So your hypothesis is very good, and I will I would love to um, exp uh, what you call follow this uh, more closely and try to add up something upon your writing and then I might need your help and kind of, yeah, yes, keep talking so about Pao, this. Yeah. Pao, Pao Tang, that was very, very nice um, to know that you also had, uh, uh, you know, in, in linguistics, we, we try to name um, every morphing that we find um, interesting, right? So uh, at least here, um, the, the, the syllable that came from your father, we, we, we I mean, at least we, Mark and I, we call them the syllable. Um, so it'd be Pau. Pau will be Petri syllable. That's so that it came from your father. Tang is your auto syllable, your name, right? Pau Tang. So, um, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that was interesting. I didn't know that uh, Kuki, uh, you, your, your language had that. And I'm going to add if I this now. Yeah. And in terms of nicknames, um, this is not only to Pau Tang. Uh, my request is um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a very rigorous. Uh, Data. But if you have some time, if you are living with a community, please pay attention to the, the way people call each other with nicknames. Of course, if it is not um, Indic derived like Kala, Kali, or something mm. like Hero, like that, but if it is very native origin, nicknames can be very, um, can tell a lot of story, can carry a lot of story about our culture. Nicknames. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in fact, uh, if Salendra is still there, Poro naming system, I, I, I don't have enough data to claim this, but Boro's older naming system is preserved in the 
if if somebody can dig them out, it will be wonderful. And Monali, <laughs> your Dimasa system might take a bit here. So nicknames are also something that you know we might start calling Kala, Kali, or something which is Eki or something like that, naming a nickname. But very often nicknames are you know, you name it, you know, with, with all your heart, with all some, you know, so those can have, you know, some very intricate information about your language, your culture, you know, and, and you know, the, the, the way we, we think of how the name is in our system, how the language system works. Okay, so you know, please pay attention to our nicknames too. <laughs> I also want to um, add um, um, one, um, you know, opinion of mine, which I have for Dimasa naming. Um, I was, when I was looking at your presentation and it was so wonderful. And when I saw the discussion that Olin and Bijan and Othao Kip had mentioned. So I started understanding that, um, you know, uh, if, if we have to understand the Udugaru group of people, then um, if we look at um, Garos and the Dimasas, because they live in the hills um, at the present time, and um, our naming system is very different from that of um, Adi and uh, Kukichin, because we don't have the you know, uh, syllabic naming related with our uh, grandparents or parents. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, I think that claims to heels hypothesis uh, kind of is, uh, you know, it works for the Dimasas uh, because um, if we look at the history when, uh, you know, uh, when it was uh, basically uh, the territory expansion of the Kacharis and uh, when they had to build, um, you know, the Dimasas had to build the Dimapur kingdom and when there was a home invasion and they had to further come down to the hills, they had to rush the hills to uh, find an abode to build the uh, expansion of the kingdom. So that was how Maibang kingdom was built and then the Kaspur plains and so on. So I think even if we have um, native uh, proper names, the native proper names are actually um, basically, uh, you know, like calc, they are like loan translations of the Sanskrit or the Indic yeah. names, yeah. of course. Trans Transliterate because, names, yeah. Yes, uh, if, I think that is the same for, um, if I have to think of the names that were given to the kings or the commanders, even in the Dimapur kingdom, uh, their native names were also, uh, basically, you know, uh, literal translations of the Indic or Sanskrit names. So I think um, the the hypothesis for the Bodo Garo will be very different from um, the Tani and Milang and Kukichin people. So I think um, this also shows that we have different waves of uh, migration and different waves of expansion of um, territory building. So I think your talk has given us so much scope to understand uh, this. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, just a quick um, note to, um, about um, on on Dimasa and Boro. Yes, um, we we there could be a, yeah there, there it might it, it might look like it, it's compatible to what Scott is suggesting. But uh, when we talk about a language that has been the, the structure of the naming system and the structure of the morphological process in that language, is so, if they are intricate, that means the history is much deeper than um, state nation building process. You know, the, um, at least in Northeast India, the concept of nation state building is quite recent. What Scott is talking about is 2000 years. But what we are arguing with this system of this archaic system is much older. You know, it it's so. For example, um, when when I say Tani says Tani group, the Tani group uh, did not exist as a as a, a huge tribe, right? Mm -hmm. Must be one pocket there, one right, pocket right. there, one pocket, yeah. So, but it's still there were people in the hills. So um, that's one way to look at it. Um, but at the same time, uh, as you say that. The, that um, um, 
the, the, the movement of hills and the movement from uh, plains to hill is uh, you know, the, the story that you, you have with the Bodo and also Dimasa, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, at the same time, um, I think it would be also interesting to look at why it has an Indic origin, right? Why didn't you have a native terms for that? Yeah, because um, yeah, one thing that we, we can understand from all these nation state building is it's, it's based on society which are purely based on hierarchy, right? A hierarchical system that, that has, you know, that has to be, that, that society has to have a hierarchical system for a long, long years. And, um, you know, even within that system, if they cannot afford to have their own term to have the the term for a chief or the king, but have the term from another um, concept, from another language, that means it's already so that it has a potential of being um, recent. I mean, um, I, I'm not contradicting to what Monali is saying. You are right that it, yeah, the, the Scott hypothesis complies with, uh, with um, you know, the Dimasa and Boro group, but um, my, the way I'm, I, I want you to think, maybe. Can I add a little bit? Much deeper, to go more deeper. I mean, why did it happen like that? So something like that. Okay. 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 Can I add uh, something a little bit on that? Because uh, yeah, uh, our, yeah, our, our understanding of uh, what they call the movement or migration of uh, what they call uh, migration of uh, this one uh, from hills to valley and uh, valley to hill is the following. So, Boro and Garo languages, Boro, uh, Boro Garo languages, or speaker of Boro Garo languages, move to the plain much, much before uh, mm -hmm. other people could have moved. And they were the first people to have moved to the plain. But prior to their movement to the plain, they were hill settlers. And as a consequence of their movement to the plain, they had innovated lots of uh, what call linguistic features, including naming pattern. And the uh, what you call migration of what you call the, uh, the what you call the, uh, the, um, the pushing of uh, uh, what you call the Dimasa from, uh, uh, from Dimapu to now where they live in the hill is a recent phenomena. Huh? It's a, just a recent phenomena. A recent phenomena is just uh, just pre before pre pre uh, what you call uh, pre colonial time or at, at least uh, during or before the pre colonial time but much much before that as you have told the dimasas and the borogaro they were also hill settler and then that they move uh, uh, to the plain so that's how movement so the point that we are uh, here discussing is that uh, there is a lot of movement in this uh, from plain uh, from, from hill to valley. Bodo Garo languages are one. They have innovated a lot of uh, plain linguistic features. But prior to that, so they were also hill settlers. And then the, if you look at the uh, trace, so for what role linguist has in this is that uh, prior to uh, their movement to the plain, what were their uh, archaic linguistic expressions? Uh, apart from the naming system, there could be other archaic linguistic features. Which yes, can yeah. So um, that that in fact is uh, Mark's paper. I, I didn't want it to take um, the credit <laughs> of what he has written. So he argues from linguistic evidence um, from um, the, the, the back and forth movement of um, Tibetan speakers. And uh, in one of the um, evidence that he saw is this top topographical uh, six system where you have upper level, middle level, like referencing system. So this is one uh, linguistic evidence that um, he um, talks about. And um, at least in the missing groups, because you can clearly clearly see that when they move from the hills to the plain, they lose that feature. So missing speakers do not have that same um, Dexis, topographical Dexis system anymore as um, the the lower Adi or the upper Adi has. So their language are mutually intelligible. It, it you know, they, they lose that part because it's, it's no longer used. So in fact, he, he um, I think in his paper, he used a lot of other linguistics evidence um, to show uh, all this population movement. 
yeah, that's <laughs> that's my addition. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, plenty of discussion there uh, happening. And uh, yeah, do we have any more questions from the audience? Yeah, I had just one uh, question. Uh, so this is particular to the Tani group, uh, this naming uh, pattern. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it something similar? Is it uh, with the other group, Arunachal uh, languages as well, other groups? Like Other the disyllabic uh, formation uh, of names. Um, say that again. Is it the same among yeah, other Tani groups? Yes, yes. Outside, outside Tani. Oh, outside Tani. Yeah. Uh, in in Arunachal Pradesh. Yes, yes. Yeah, no. In outside, um, it will not be the same outside the Tani group. It will be, um, and it will also not be very exactly the same. Uh, it will vary from village to village. So okay. even within Tani group, there is a huge diversity. Even um, say, for example, even in my own tribe of, of only two village, we have a huge diversity. So um, even within that, if you see, but diversity in just the semantic domains, okay? Not in the basic word formation level, okay? It will be the same, exactly the same in all the Tani, um, at least at the word formation morphological level, but in terms of semantic domains, yeah, they will vary um, mm -hmm. among groups, but not, it, it will be very different from the non-Tani group, like Idu, Tarao, um, Monpa, it will be completely different. Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, any more questions? Uh... I think uh, that was a very fruitful discussion, very interesting uh, topic, I should say, uh, because I think not many people have looked at the naming system, uh, especially in, in Northeast India. It, it's yeah. not a very familiar it's a topic. Good, so good area. kind of opens up a lot of uh, things that we can do uh, in, in the future. So. Yeah, if there are no more questions, I think I will thank the uh, speaker once again for that wonderful talk. And uh, yeah, I think I'll hand it over back to Bijen. Thank you. Thank you, Tensu. Uh, yes. uh, now, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Monali Long Malai for both of <clears throat> Thank you, um, uh, Bijan, for uh, being the chairperson for today's uh, final session. Thank you to uh, Dr. Temsu for moderating the session. And thank you to our speaker for today's uh, session, uh, Dr. Yanki Modi, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation on human proper names and the reconstruction of Zomian prehistory. Um, it has given us so much thoughts and insightful discussion because um, it is so understudied. And even if we have covered naming system in some way or the other in our linguistic research, but it needs more extensive study. And uh, we are very grateful that uh, you have illuminated us with your inputs and um, your uh, thoughts on this um, aspect with this uh, talk. So we thank you once again for um, being here today. Um, thank you to all the participants also for being a part of today's uh, final session. Before we uh, close the session, I would like to request all the participants present here to kindly turn your videos on so that we can take one group photo uh, in memory of the conclusion for the special uh, lecture series. So kindly yeah, so turn your video on. May I request uh, Ma'am Yanki to uh, stop your sharing so that the Oh, sorry, sorry. The, uh, where is it? In a gallery okay. mode, yeah. Okay. All right. Now I can. <clears throat> Uh, kindly turn your videos on. It's a request to all the participants as it's the last uh, program for this year. Am I visible? Yes, I'm sir. on the way. <laughs> but, uh, I think you need to turn, you need to change the direction. The sun is on the back of your head. <laughs> 
Uh, something yeah, like that's that. Yeah, better. better. Oh yes, better. yes. Oh, yeah. no. Olindra, Olindra, also please turn your video on and Hangi Chanti Ma'am also you can turn your video on. Samir, uh, Tukuvelu, Pritam. All are requested. Kindly turn on. Okay, anyway. So, uh, thank you everyone. And uh, we will see you in ICT Blani 2 in March in IIT Guwahati. And till then, have a great day to all. Yeah, Merry Christmas and New Year to all <laughs> in advance. Thank you, thank you. Merry Christmas in advance and Happy yeah. New Year in advance. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, same to you, everybody. Okay.